All right, so we're going to talk about typical sections and the considerations and things that are taken into account uh, with typical sections. So um, as we talk about typical sections here, there's really two particular types that we're going to talk about. And uh, the considerations for design are the same for both, really. So there's urban sections and rural sections or typical sections. So really some of the considerations of design are how much how much vehicular traffic there is, uh, what type of traffic, is it all semi-truck traffic, is it um, just regular personal type vehicle traffic, that, uh, that taking that into account really uh, determines what type of road you're going to be building, how much subgrade you'll have, things like that. So if you've ever noticed, if you travel on your normal street by your house, it's probably made up of just asphalt or asphalt with concrete curb and gutter. So that type of road is made to take less uh, traffic flow and less weight than say a highway. So if you look at Highway 41, for instance, um, it's all concrete and it's wide. Uh, the slopes are a little bit more steep to shed water off of it. So all of this stuff is taken into account when they create these sections or these, these cross-sectional um, designs for highways and roads. Another thing that they look at is obviously climate conditions. So how much rain is going to actually be falling? Uh, where to store snow. So if a lot of our big highways in Wisconsin have big medians in the middle, and they're typically just ditches where grass grows. Um, that The reason they do that is so that way they have a place to toss the snow. Okay. Now, if you're down in Texas, their slopes on their roads are a little bit more extreme than they are up here on the cross-sectional sides of the road. So from the center line out to the edge of the road, is more of a steep slope because they get more of a rain event down by them. Matter of fact, I was down in Houston, Texas, um, and I landed during uh, the beginning of a hurricane, and uh, the rain, the amount of rain that was falling was like three inches of rain an hour that was coming down. And uh, the roads down there actually could handle that amount of rain. It was, it was cheap flowing that much rain off the road. If we had that in this area, um, it pretty much shut down traffic. You'd have standing standing water on the roads because our slopes aren't enough to get the water off the roads. So it really depends on the area you're in, what type of weather you typically uh, are dealing with, things like that is another consideration for the design of that cross section. Um, and also the uh, presence of natural features so rock cliffs, rivers, lakes, that'll determine what type of cross-section you have as well. Um, and also the type and intensity of development around there, and then the safety of the user, so traffic speeds. So we have to look at that or look at traffic speeds for the type of typical section we're creating. Uh, travel lanes, so what we're looking at is function first. So we want to make sure that it'll support the vehicle. Uh, then we look at pavement types. So unpaved is a low pavement type, so something that's gravel surface. You find a lot of that out in North Dakota area because it's a lot of rural roads. Intermediate would be some type of surface treatment. So either like gravel with a tar mix poured on it, or in Wisconsin here on our secondary roads, they like to use asphalt, and then when the asphalt starts to deteriorate, they put down tar and put chip seal on it. So it's a, they like pour gravel on top of tar. Um, it's a real cheap way to maintain a road. And then there's high pavement types where you're concrete type pavements. Uh, the selection criteria basically is on traffic volume, what the soil characteristics are, which you guys are beating the death of right now in Tim's soils classes. Uh, the past performance in the area, so how, you know what what type of traffic patterns have they seen or volumes in the past? 
availability of materials. So if they have a quarry that has limestone in it, but it's two hours away, they're probably, it's going to be too cost prohibitive to truck it from two hours away. They're going to try to find a local source and maybe the local source has pit run where it's got a lot of organics and stuff mixed in with it. So they'll actually go through and screen it and get the rock out of it and crush that rock, which is cheaper than trucking from two hours away. So it's really the availability of material. Um, energy con conservation. Initial cost, that's a big one. Maintenance cost is another one. So do they want to maintain a four-lane highway when that's all they need is a two-lane? And then the over overall life cycle. Um, one of the things I know that the town of Ledgeview, where I live, is looking at right now is GV is right now has pretty high traffic volumes and it's a lot more truck traffic now than they used to have and it's an asphalt road it's a nice wide road but asphalt and it was redone about three four years ago and it's already starting to show wear from the heavy truck traffic so the life cycle that they thought it was going to get 10 years out of the road they're only going to get like five so they're starting to think about um, when they redo the road, they're going to put in concrete because it has a longer life cycle. Okay. So that's the travel lanes. So the difference between urban and rural sections, uh, urban section or rural sections have uh, ditching. So it's ditch, road surface ditch, essentially. And it's something that you would see in rural Wisconsin, uh, very much like the picture on the left. Urban sections are very much like the picture on the right. We have curb and gutter. That's typically a real seller, seller for urban sections right away is if you have curb and gutter. But then we also have sidewalks and stuff like that in this picture. So more of an urban setting. Um, and the reason they do curb and gutter is because they're trying to control water uh, from pooling and stuff and uh, trying to get it off site or off the hard surfaces. Let's talk cross slope. So cross slope is really sloping there so that way we can take and get rid of the water off of the road because water can create hydroplaning. So we want it to get off the road as quickly as possible. So in a rural section, it's typically a normal crown. So you'll have a center line and then you'll have slopes breaking each, each side of the center line. Where in an urban section, it's typically parabolic shaped. So there's like a um, not like a V shape to it. It's got like a curve shape to it. And uh, that will help slow the water enough to bring it to the gutters a little bit slower, but also shed the water off uh, in the same means as a straight break slope, like on a rural section. Um, so there are some standards as to how much percentage you have to or you need to have for going on the cross slope. So the ASH2 recommendations for a low traffic uh, cross slope is two to six percent. Okay, for a high traffic cross slope, it's one and a half to two percent. So the reason that is is because also for traffic speeds. So on a low traffic road, the cross slopes can be two to 6% because it's a lower, typically a lower speed road. All right, so we're gonna talk about slope camber a little bit. So this is a, this is really a difference between a normal crown versus a parabolic, or parabolic crown, crown or parabolic crown, crown. Jeez, that was a mouthful. Anyway, so this just shows a little graphic that shows the difference between the two. All right, so let's talk urban sections. So urban sections, like I said, are typically made up of sidewalk, curb and gutter, maybe a median, okay? So those urban cross sections look similar to this. These are, this is a DOT urban cross section. You'll see I have a nice drawn out urban cross section for the assignment when you go to tackle that. Here are some more. Uh, one of these, or a couple of these examples show a median. Okay. This is a rural section. It shows the, the makeup of a rural cross section or the elements uh, where you have an asphalt roadway 
and you'll have a shoulder which is either gravel or grass in some instances and that'll go all the way down to the ditch slope. Okay, here's another graphic of an ur urban section. This is what an actual cross-sectional view would look like with the slopes and different things like that on it. Okay, so lane widths, the travel lanes, there's a lot to be considered here. It really depends on the volume of your traffic that you're gonna be uh, handling on the road, as well as weather, okay? So we gotta be able to take into account also allowment for steering adjustment, Okay, for lateral clearance and then you want to stop pavement edge crumbling so you don't want to have a, a car might only be eight and a half feet wide but you want to make sure you have an 11 or 12 foot wide lane so that way the cars aren't always driving on the edge of that you don't want it to crumble or deteriorate okay and then on top of that those travel lanes the cost of the width really uh, can be a function of the whole project and then do we need a bicycle lane so you're going to have to make it a little bit wider a typical bicycle lane is six feet wide so there's going to be additional cost to add bicycle lanes um so typically 12 feet wide is desirable so a lot of times you'll see um, roads that around this area at least they have 12 foot lanes um, more often than not now though they're going wider because of there's, there's so much more bicycle traffic and it's relatively lower cost to add that extra two feet of lane width for the bicycle lane on a 12 foot wide um, because then they don't have to make a separate path or add a sidewalk for bicycle traffic so shoulders um, and I know you guys have been talking uh, like material properties and stability and stuff like that. So the function of a shoulder really uh, does two things. It stabilizes the road and the road bed from kicking out underneath. Okay, so it gives that lateral support. Um, it also allows for a spot to pull off. So for emergency issues or for bicycles or pedestrians to be walking on or for a mail, mail truck to deliver on. So shoulders have to be able to support as much as the road, but they're not a normal road driving surface. So they don't have to be made of the same material as the driving surface itself. Okay, so let's talk geometry a little bit of the shoulder. So they can be either paved or unpaved. So in this picture, you'll see that it's unpaved but it means that there's stable soil underneath that. So you could pull off and you wouldn't sink out of sight. So that's one of the things that really has to be looked at. So depending on the type of material, it really denotes what type of slope you're gonna have. So if it's a paved surface, you can have um, a little bit less slope. So two to 6% because it's gonna drain faster off of a paved impervious surface. Where for gravel, you have a little bit more steep slope so four to six percent for gravel because it's got a little bit of impervious properties to it but water will get through it and then for turf or grass surface it's eight percent or more um, and that's because water will be absorbed or taken up by that grass and the typical width of a shoulder is between two and twelve feet really depends on what the use is talk curbs now so a curb is really there to control water and control where it's going to drain to so there's a bunch of different types of curb um, there's a curb kind called surmountable which is like a driveway entrance um, and then there's there's high back curve which is what's in this picture it's typically six inches high or more Okay, it typically sits flush with the roadway, the, the flag of the curb does, where it actually touches the roadway, where the pavement touches it, so that way the water can flow from one end to the other. Okay, here's a couple of those different types of curb. So the um, curb in the middle here um, is what they would call a surmountable curb. It's like a driveway curb, so you could actually drive up that if you wanted to. 
where it would be less easy to drive up um, the ones in the upper left here because they have the big lip on them. Medians. So let's talk medians a little bit. These are typically in urban ro road sections. Uh, you will find them once in a while in a, in a rural environment, but only for larger roads. So basically it, it separates opposing traffic, gives some aesthetics, and uh, will help promote drainage. Okay. So it also serves as space for future lanes. So um, on GV, like I was talking about before, they're going to be redoing some of the surface there and they're actually going to be putting in uh, a few more medians to separate traffic. Uh, right now they have a turn lane in the middle and they sort of want to control traffic a little bit better from people using that center median. They want them to use it in designated spots instead. Okay. Um, also with those medians, they plant trees and stuff and that or plantings. And that helps minimize the headlight glare. So there's there's uses for medians. Um, the geometry of those medians really depends on what air, type of area you're in. So the upper right hand picture that we have here is a highway much like Highway 41 between Appleton and Green Bay. It's just a big grass median on the inside. So what they do in this case is that's that's got a safety function to it as well. So if a semi rolls off the road, the material in the center of that median is softer. So the semi will actually, a lot of the energy from the semi will get absorbed in that center median. So they won't make it to the oncoming lanes. So there's a safe, safety aspect with that as well. Where the middle picture is a raised median, something that you couldn't cross with a vehicle. Um, gives the driver a physical cue that they can't travel across that. Whereas the one in the uh, lower right corner is a median that is would be like a turning lane or something like that where you could actually turn or whip a U-wheel across it. Okay. Okay, so the median types, uh, the depressed median is like that one that I showed you picture in the upper right uh, where they have a ditch basically in the middle. Okay, that's a depressed median. A raised median would be one with curb and gutter and the benefits of that are basically to separate traffic. And then there's the flush, which was like that lower left picture or lower right picture that I showed you in the slide, first slide that we were talking medians. And you can use that for uh, turn, turning or things like that. Okay, so that is typical sections and their function. Um, you'll go, once you get into the assignment, there's a video there as well that will help you uh, tackle that.